we uh, need to recognize a member of the California State Assembly uh, with what we're calling the Courage Award. Uh, we give this award occasionally to a legislator who has stood up and voted for the best interests of people with developmental disabilities in the face of substantial political pressure. Evan Lowe was elected to the assembly in November of 2014 to represent District 28 in the Silicon Valley. At the age of 31, he was the youngest Asian American ever elected to the assembly. And earlier, at the age of 26, he was elected mayor of Campbell making him the youngest LGBT mayor in the United States. And today he becomes the youngest legislator and the first Asian American or LGBT legislator to be presented with the ARC-UCP Courage Award. Last year we sponsored Assembly Bills 2602 by Assemblywoman Shannon Grove, uh, and that was to provide people with disabilities more protection from sexual assault and exploitation. Well, the bill went to the Assembly Public Safety Committee where it hit a wall of opposition from the committee chair who, like Mr. Lowe, was a Democrat. Nonetheless, Assemblymember Lowe voted in favor of the bill, giving it the majority it needed to pass the committee. Now, it turns out the bill ultimately didn't get the support it would have uh, needed to pass the full legislature. But nevertheless, we honor the man who put his vote where his heart was for people with intellectual and, dis and um, developmental disabilities, and that would be Assemblymember Evan Lowe. And here to say a few more words is the ARC's Public Policy Director, Greg DeGier. Thanks, Nick. Um, <coughs> the, uh, the bill that uh, Dick was referring to, it took two votes, two roll calls in, on two different weeks in the Public Safety Committee to pass, and the first time we were short, um, and uh, I had never met Mr. Lowe, so I uh, saw him standing there at the elevator and ran up to him before the elevator got there. I didn't know anything about him much, and uh, gave him the elevator speech explaining why the pe people with uh, intellectual developmental disabilities are subject to much higher levels of crime, including sexual assault and exploitation than other people, and what we wanted to do about it. He got it like that. I was very impressed. Found out later, he's a family member. He's a uh, cousin with an intellectual disability and uh, was uh, very happy to, uh, to support us. So, Evan Lowe. Good morning. Uh, I had a great opportunity to sit uh, with you here this morning. How many of you are from Santa Clara County? Raise your hand. Yes, a few folks. Anyone live in Campbell? No? So I can get away and speak freely and not get uh, offended. Anybody? Oh, you live? Oh, some people in Campbell. Oh, oh, hey. Yeah, I was born there. You're born there? Yeah. Um, I, I thank you very much for this recognition and for your being here. How many of you like politicians? Raise your hand. <laughs> Why are you all laughing? <laughs> I don't understand. <laughs> Tell me. Why is it funny? Let's say if you were to say nurses, people say the positive connotation. People said teachers, we love teachers. Firefighters, we love teachers. And then if I said politician, he was like, eh. <laughs> but you just heard about a presentation on the importance of these people uh, towards our lives. So what are some characteristics as to why we don't like politicians? Tell us. Yes, oh, you do, yeah, please don't, don't be so forthcoming, please, by all means. Well, especially, especially in this political climate, they don't listen to us, no matter how loud we tell them not to do things. Okay, but, uh, politicians do not listen to us, no matter how loudly and how uh, vocal we might be on these issues. Uh, what else? Why do why are politicians have a bad rep? By the way, you're going to be seeing them, I think, tomorrow. Isn't that right? <laughs> facts uh, don't matter. Facts don't matter, okay. <laughs> <laughs> something, else. 
sometimes they tell us one thing and then they do something else. Those dang politicians. I'm doing well in this crowd already. <laughs> yes, please. Uh, politicians are only thinking in the advancement of the next election, so self-interest, perhaps. Any others? Yes. Sometimes power corrupts. Sometimes power. Some, somebody has a very has a lot of um, responsibility, and they forgot why they're there. They've got their their passion as to what their purpose was, and so maybe they get lost along the way. Uh, power perhaps corrupts. Well, I t uh, before coming uh, to the state legislature, uh, I taught American government at uh, De Anza Community College. And so I'm very passionate about public service. And um, your observations on politicians are no different than the average person if you talk to them out in the street at the farmer's market or at the grocery store or wherever it might be. At the same time, we are all here because we want to ensure and demand what we know is in the best interest of the communities that we represent and work for. So yet we require the accountability and transparency for the people that we elect. So case in point, how many of you know and can name your state senator and your state assembly member? Raise your hand. Great, that is your job. You're here. And how many of you like your state assembly member and state senator? Raise your hand. So, as you can imagine, that a significant amount of individuals in this room know their legislators, know their representatives, and they like them. But yet, there seems to be a disconnect with the entire population of politicians. Um, and I want to try and encourage us to think differently, which is to say that uh, a vast majority of them uh, are in the public interest. But the, the democracy, the system of democracy is serving itself well, which is to say that democracy is supposed to be slow. It is supposed to be slow and there's supposed to be a significant amount of debate. Now where I think things get lost, and we talk about facts then, is sometimes politicians do not let reality alter their ideology. Let me say that again, reality not altering ideology. And that's when we talk about facts. We've heard a question uh, and about facts and being driven. Now, I come from San Jose, Silicon Valley. I was born and raised there. And let me just say something that is not very popular for a politician to say, and especially on recorded camera. <laughs> <laughs> I love taxes. I love taxes. <laughs> let me tell you, I'm a product of publication, public education all the way through from all the way from K through 12, community college to San Jose State University. And I'm a poli career politician. I'm 33 years, old, three, 33 years old. And I was on the city council for eight years and now I serve in the state legislature. Career politician all the way through on the public dime, on your dime. Because I care about our respective communities. But why do I mention that I love taxes? What is the definition of a tax? A tax is to ensure that we have collective resources for public good, for the public benefit. And I want more. I am unsatisfied with what I am getting in the state of California. And particularly when you talk about any issue from infrastructure, from public education, or issues of social services. And when you think about what happened in the 60s, what was the effective tax rate for the top 1% in the 60s? upwards of 70%. And what is the effective tax rate for the top 1% today in 2017? In the 30 percentile. So what has happened? What has happened? We can look at the facts and statistics all day long and get frustrated and saying we demand more. Who can possibly be, by the way, without a heart, without a conscience against funding for the fundamental principles and values that we all care about? Who could possibly be against it? I will guarantee you not a single person. Not a single person because this is about basic humanity, providing services to those that need it the most, that are the most vulnerable. Now I say this because I see what happens in the state's uh, budget conversations. And it's oftentimes the conversation and the rhetoric of limited piece of the pie. So we're fighting for a limited piece of the pie, when in fact the conversation should be, let's expand the pie so everybody can continue to get the appropriate type of 
revenues for the things that we care about. So when you go and talk to legislators tomorrow, today or tomorrow, ask a simple fundamental question. Yes, we understand that you will support these issues, and I'm sure you know someone with developmental disabilities. So what are you doing? What are you doing to fundamentally change the system, not just for the short term, but for the long term? How can you effectively champion our issues, and, and how can we help you? How can we help you ma do make your job easier and ensuring that you have increased funding and increased budget that's effective in getting the desired outcome that we deserve? Let me finally say that um, I, I am so appreciative of this honor because I also serve as chair of the California Legislative LGBT Caucus. Uh, we have eight members of the Legislative Caucus, and I heard that you had a very meaningful panel discussion yesterday on the intersection between the LGBT community and those with developmental disabilities. Uh, we are stronger together. And so we celebrate diversity, we don't export it, and it's important that we fundamentally advance the interests that we care about. So let us use this opportunity to be here to say that there are many voices and many champions, but how do we amplify that message effectively? And that's really what the conversation is about. Yes, we know that stats and statistics are important, but we must ask a different question, which is we cannot keep repeating the same thing over and over again, expecting a d different results. So what are we gonna do differently this year? So again, when you talk to your legislators this year, ask them, what are you doing to make sure that we can advance the interest and not s continue on the status quo and how can we help you be effective champions. We must change this protest energy and you see on the outside of this environment to electoral energy and that's how we will win. So I thank you very much for all the work that you're doing because you're doing the people's work and I very much appreciate it. Thank you very much.